In this video, we will discuss three different ways in which winders can be created. First, we will describe how to create winders automatically using the L and U shaped stair tools. We will then discuss how to create winders using the staircase specification dialog. And finally, we will go over the process for creating fully custom winders using landings. Let's start with the L and U shaped stair tools. These tools are a great way to easily and quickly create staircases in Chief Architect. When one of these tools is selected, the new shaped staircase dialog will appear, where some basic properties can be specified. One such setting is called Make Winders. When this box is checked, the program will split the landing for L shaped staircases into two separate winder treads. When this box is checked for U-shaped staircases, three winder treads are created. If the split landing option is also enabled when creating a U-shaped staircase with winders, four or five treads are created, depending on the gap distance set. If the gap distance is set to 11 inches or more, five treads will be created, with the middle tread acting as a rectangular or square landing. Once winders are created using these tools, each winder tread is treated as a standalone landing. They can be modified further to your liking. We will go a bit more in depth on landings later on in the video. In addition to the L and U shaped stair tools, winders can also be created using the staircase specification dialog. However, there are a few requirements to be aware of. First, you must have a room with a valid room definition. You cannot use this method to create winders in an area composed of only two corner walls. If this configuration is needed, enclose the area in with invisible walls or room dividers so that a proper room area is defined. Second, to create winders in this way, a curved stair section must be present. So with that said, let's dive in. To start, select the Draw Stairs tool and create a straight stair section consisting of four treads. Next, create a second straight stair section starting from the end of the first section, making sure that the number of treads equals the number of winders you are wanting to create. Here in this example, the second stair section consists of four treads. With the second stair section now created, hold down the Alt key if you're on a Windows machine, or the Control key if you're on a Mac. Then left click and drag the edit handle at the top of the second stair section to move these four treads. Alternatively, hold down the right mouse button while dragging the same edit handle to perform the same procedure. How you move the mouse while curving the stairs determines the direction of the curve. But note that if you move your mouse further away from the stair, the number of treads may change. So be careful when curving the stair section to not move the mouse any more than what is desired. Notice that we have stopped the winder stair section after creating a 90 degree turn. Using the draw stairs tool, we will draw a third stair section starting from the last winder tread to form an L-shaped staircase. Now, using the select objects tool, click on the staircase to select it and use the Move Edit handle to move the L-shaped staircase until it bumps into the corner. With the staircase still selected, click on the Open Object Edit tool found in the Edit Toolbar, or double-click on any of the three sections to open the Staircase Specification dialog. At the bottom of the dialog, each stair section will be listed. To the right of each section is a Winders checkbox. Checking this box for any one section will also enable it for the other sections. You can also change other properties here, if you so desire. To adjust the tread depth or the number of treads, select the Lock Tread Depth or Lock Number of Treads radio button. To adjust the bottom height, top height, or the riser height, uncheck the Automatic Heights checkbox. Do note that the tread depth is measured from the walk line which is 12 inches from the right side of a stair section by default. 
This value can be changed on the style panel, along with the ability to toggle the walk line on or off in a floor plan view. For now, we will simply check the winders box next to one of the stair sections and click OK. Notice that the four treads that were part of the second stair section have extended to meet the walls. This same process can be used for U-shaped staircases as well. Let me demonstrate. First, I will disconnect the top section of the L-shaped staircase we created. To do this, I will use the Select Objects tool, click on the top stair section, then I will click on the Disconnect Selected Subsection Edit tool. With this section now fully disconnected, I will simply click the Delete key on my keyboard to remove it from the plan. Next, I will again hold down the Alt key on my keyboard as I am on a Windows machine, but if you are on a Mac, hold down the Control key instead. With the key held down, I will drag the edit handle that is at the end of the winder stair section, and I will drag it downwards so that the top edge is parallel with the bottom edge. I will once again grab the draw stair tool and create a third stair section going up to complete the staircase. Now, I will select the Straight Interior Wall tool and create a wall on the outside edge of the staircase. Since we've already marked at least one section of the staircase to have winders in the staircase specification, we do not need to reopen the dialog box. You can see just how easy it is to create winders automatically using this process. In some instances, it may be necessary to create each winder manually. In these cases, it is recommended to utilize the landing tool. Landings in Chief Architect are versatile, polyline-based objects that can be shaped and adjusted to your liking. They also will recognize other landings, as well as staircases, if they are bumped up next to each other. Let's take a look at how landings can be used in this manner. Start with a basic building containing two stair sections that have been created a fair distance apart. Then, select the landing tool from the menu and either click and drag to create a landing or left click once in the plan to place a square landing. The landing can now be selected, resized, and then moved into position. Here in this example, resize the landing to be 4 feet by 4 feet and move it into the corner. Next, open the landing up to specification, remove the railings from each edge, then click OK. Now, use the edit handles that display along the landing to adjust the shape to be a triangle. This is easily done by dragging one of the corner edit handles to another corner of the landing until you see a red snap indicator. With the triangle now established, Use the Copy Paste and Reflect About Object Edit tools to create a reflected copy of the landing. We now have two separate winder treads. Now, let's move each stair section to meet up with the corresponding landings. Once connected, Chief Architect will automatically adjust the height of these stair components. We can see this if we take a camera view such as a perspective floor overview. After verifying that the stair components are all connected, let's return to a floor plan view to finish editing the shape of the winder treads. Using the Select Objects tool, select one of the landings, then select the Add Break Edit tool located on the Edit toolbar. Click where the side of the stair section meets the landing to place a breakpoint at this location. By doing this, we have created an additional edge on the landing, allowing us more control over the shape of the winder. With the new breakpoint placed and the new edge created, use the corner edit handle to adjust the shape of the stair landing. Perform the same procedure on the opposite landing, Then take a camera view to see the results.
using the information in this video, you can create a wide array of winder and stair configurations in your plans.